Hey everybody, it's Dr. Taylor and welcome to the types of measurement scales. This is a four part series and this is uh, part one, which is all about nominal scales. So today we're going to learn all about what is a nominal scale and what kind of um, statistics do you use to analyze nominal scales. So let's get started. All right, so nominal scales. Nominal scales are the most basic type of measurement scale. So if you decide to use a nominal scale, you cannot transform it into any other type of scale. It is what it is. And really what it is is used to name categories that are attributes of objects. So things like male, female, um, yes or no questions are nominal scales. Um, the numbers that we assign are used to identify the attribute, but they're arbitrary. It doesn't matter. You can give it any number and it doesn't really matter. They're arbitrary. Um, and that's because these, the numbers have meaning. What has meaning is the actual category name or the label. Um, so it's really important to note that with nominal scales, there's absolutely no hierarchy between the categories. Uh, the category name is more important than the number. And so, for example, a gender question, the measurement scale would be something like a one equals male, a two equals female, a three equals uh, prefer not to answer. And we use the numbers just because it makes it easier for us to analyze, it makes it easier for the uh, software package to analyze. Um, but really, for nominal scales, what matters is this male, female, or prefer not to answer. So there's different types of nominal scales. Um, there's scales like gender, where you can use male, female, or prefer not to answer. And we're gonna go over a couple different types of scales for gender and ethnicity and these different nominal scales. Um, the number is based on identifiers. Um, so that's a different type of nominal scale where the no, it's a number based identifier. Uh, so you have something like a social security number. And so maybe the five, 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 five equals John Johnson. So the number is arbitrary. It's really the name that matters when it comes to nominal scales. Uh, zip code is another nominal scale, um, where the seven, eight, four, one, four, is simply used to identify Southside Corpus Christi. So with nominal scales, again, there's no hierarchy of numbers. Just because you are one and you are male, it does not mean that you are better than a two, which is equal to female. Um, there's just absolutely no hierarchy. Um, same thing with social security numbers. The five, 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 five is not better or more then uh, five, 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 zero. I should have thought about having to say that uh, before I put that in here. Um, I sound like one of the attorney commercials. All right, so uh, zip code 78414, it's not any better than 79412, but what matters and what's different is that they identify two different areas. So it's the name that has meaning, not the actual number. So when it comes to examples, there's different ways that you can create nominal scales. And so for gender, you could have something as simple as, simple as what is your gender, uh, male or female. Um, you could have what is your gender, male or female or other, please specify. And now one of the things that we're really concerned about is that male and female does not include how people self-identify with the gender. And so if we're, if it's really important, we, we want to be able to identify all the different identities that people identify with, whether it's female, male, transgender, female, trans, transgender, male, gender variant or non-conforming or something that's not listed. Now, the question becomes, how are you going to use this information? Um, because 
maybe knowing that somebody is transgender female versus trans or, or tra transgender male, maybe they could simply answer who they identify with, which is female or male and, and could, will you use that information, whether they're transgender or not? Does it make sense to obtain that information in your analysis? So always allow them to always allow all people to be able to have an option to express who they are. But if you're not going to use that data, try to figure out how to compress the scale. Um, so gender is something and gender is something that we have to be sensitive with nowadays. Like everyone deserves the right to identify how they would like. Um, so we also have these other scales, these multiple response nominal scales. And this is a variant of um, the nominal scale. And the difference between this and, and what we call is the, the traditional nominal scale is that a multiple response nominal scale has a check all that apply statement. So you can select multiple answers and this allows respondents to select multiple answers and we use these when re respondents will have more than one answer or when they don't fit neatly into one category so this might be something um like ethnicity where people have um have different ethnicities that they identify with and it really helps avoid insulting the respondent by allowing them to clearly identify with the appropriate attributes. Multiple response nominal scales are also used when we're trying to understand um, all the categories that might apply. So for example, we could ask a question, what stores do you visit in the local mall? And we can make it multiple response nominal by having a list of all the stores available and letting them check all that apply. So for ethnicity, in terms of um, some examples of ethnicity and why we allow people to select all that apply versus just picking a box, is that um, allowing them to self-select um, and where they can choose not to answer or they can even write in their own um, description, it allows people to feel heard and to feel like you know they they matter and that who they are is a part of what your research is and what you're trying to understand um if we just put them into a box then we're not t totally hearing people we just uh, force them to have a single voice and they feel dehumanized when they're for forced to make a choice like this so this graphic right here is from Sarai Rosenberg, and she does a really phenomenal job about creating better demographic questions. And so while you go forward with your career or working on your project, I highly recommend that you check her out. And, and this is the website that you can go to right down here to be able to see all the different examples that she creates and demonstrates for you in terms of demographics. So another example of a multiple response nominal variable is uh, brand positioning. And so you can ask a question where, which of the following attributes do you associate with, and you can input any brand here. So I put example brand and see it has check all that apply. And so I can check all the attributes that I feel like this example brand has. And so that's an example of a multiple response nominal variable using branding positioning. We could use advertising effectiveness as an example. And so where have you seen advertisements for example brand and check all that apply? And I could check all the places that I remember seeing these advertisements. And that would be a measure of advertising effectiveness. So now the question is, what do we report? When we're analyzing the data, when we're analyzing these nominal and multi -res multiple response nominal scales, what can we report? Well, we can only do two things. Uh, first is mode, which is the most frequently occurring category. 
And sometimes we might have multiple modes, especially if we have multiple response um, nominal scales. So we could have multiple where they're equal. We have two that are the same, they're both the highest level that could be the most frequently occurring. We can also report frequencies, and these might be reported in terms of counts or percentages. Uh, you'll find that in my class, I tend to use percentages uh, rather than counts uh, because it helps um, make the data and the insights a little more clear for clients. But we can only use mode and frequency. So let's, let me show you an example. So I have this survey question, what is your gender? And it's one, two, or three. So one for males, two for females, three for prefer not to answer. I have 11 respondents who answered my survey and I have these, you know, the different cases and here are their answers. And so if I put them in order, all the answers in order, this is what I get. And I can see that my mode is one and then I have frequency counts of six males, four females, and one prefer not to answer. So if I put it in count format, this is what it would look like. If I put it in percentage format with my sample being equal to 11, I would get 54.5% males, which is simply six divided by 11, 36.4% females, which is four divided by 11, and prefer not to answer at 9.1%, which is one divided by 11. One of the things to know is that the percentages are rounded, which sometimes results in totals that are a little bit over or a little bit under 100%. So it's important to know that, especially when you're talking to the client, because it is not uncommon for them to add up these numbers while you're going through your presentation and looking for errors and making sure that things may add up. So when they don't add up perfectly, be prepared to have an answer as to why. All right, so that's it for the Types of Measurement Scales workshop, the first part, which is nominal scales. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Bye, talk to you later.